From New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, singer, dancer, and pop culture icon Paula Abdul is here talking Simon Cowell, Ariana Grande, and more. And Breast Cancer Awareness Month continues with another amazing makeover for a deserving woman. Plus, all the day's juicy hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. Tori and Dean and them. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. J. Blige, Mary, in the traffic this morning, coming to the studio. I was listening to your new album, the, the one where you did it in London. Very nice. Mary's got new music coming out, and she's trying to take things in a different direction, and she's still MJB, but with a twist. Yeah. So, did you watch Dancing with the Stars last night? Yeah. Well, I didn't. <laughs> Listen, you know, I tell you, I get hung up on HLN. I like Jane Velez Mitchell. I like um, um, Nancy Grace. I like Dr. Drew. You know, I like MSNBC, because I watch her, or is that CNBC? I like American Greed. You ever watch American Greed, Hustlers and Scoundrels? I am obsessed with a different kind of TV than I used to be into. So no, I didn't watch Stars last night, but Pitbull was on. It was Pitbull night at Dancing with the Stars. You know, Pitbull has that certain je ne sais quoi, kind of like the Mark Anthony thing. Like, I don't know what it is, and he's a little man, you know? <laughs> uh, but look, even when he takes off his glasses, I mean, he's handsome with his glasses on. Like, he's no Casper. You know, Casper only looks good with his glasses on. <laughs> but I think that Pitbull is just, everyone loves him. He plays that music. He's done Super Bowl before, yes, correct? No? So. Attention Super Bowl committee. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves Pitbull. Yeah. So, so, anyway. So he performed on the show, and then he sat at the judges' table, judging people, and they posted his real name, which you know it's not Pitbull, don't you? It's, oh. it's Armando oh. Christian Paris. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> you know, when you have a hot name like that, why do you need a street name? You know what I mean? Armando. <laughs> anyway, once again, Alphonse Ribeiro is in the lead. Oh, this, this guy is too good. <laughs> this guy is too good and too likable, and it makes it, it makes it like Dancing with the Stars cheats by having people on like this. I always say that. Um, next week, though, he might have trouble competing because apparently he pulled his groin while doing the Carlton dance <laughs> a few weeks ago. Well, you know, the body doesn't set the same way as it did back when he was like 12 and he's Carlton. The man is like 43 years old. And you know, when you get to a certain uh, point in your life, you know, everything doesn't ache all the time, but there are times where you just say, oh God, it's time to get up. There's, there's the alarm. You hit the alarm and then you say, okay, 
what aches. And then you get on the floor, right? It's just, it just naturally happens. So he pulled his groin and uh, <laughs> he'll have trouble next week. In the meantime, that Erin Andrews girl, um, you know, Dancing with the Stars is her part-time job. Uh, her full-time job, is what she does best is she's a sports commentator. So she was busy covering the World Series. So they had Jennifer Lopez's best friend, Leah Remini, come in and fill in for Erin Andrews. <laughs> I have some of the footage for you, and based on this footage, I say Aaron Andrews better hurry back because somebody is good at this job. Uh, well, you judge for yourself. Take a look. You guys did an amazing job, and you know what? The least you could have done is take off your shirt. <laughs> the least you could have done. That was last week. Take it off right now. Do something right. <laughs> I'll take it off. Next oh my God. Okay. He has one big wish to have a Leah sandwich. Oh. <laughs> A Puerto Rican. He's off. He's off. He's off. All right? He's off. He's off. Because you don't know what it feels like to get a five or a seven, do you? Do you? <laughs> I, don't, I try. I try. I try not to. There were some people in our producers' meeting that were saying, well, you know, Erin um, Andrews has nothing to worry about because, first of all, she has more credibility and longevity being a sportscaster than the new host of Dancing with the Stars. I said, well, that's a point. And then somebody else said, well, why would she leave Dancing with the Stars, you know, even for a moment to cover the World Series? And I said, well, because she studied to be a sportscaster and, you know, that's her main job. And then they were saying, well, do you think Brooke Burke, the old one that was fired... Do you think that if Dancing with the Stars called Brooke Burke, would she come back? And I said, well, yes. Well, I, I, she's got those Skechers commercials. I, you know, what is Brooke Burke doing right now? I think that she'd come back. She'd be salty, you know, because they fired her on the cell phone while she was driving her kids to school, if you recall. And, oh, sh shade. But back to Leah Remini, then people were like, no, well, you know, she talks too hard for such an American, uh, you know, all across the board show, like Dancing with the Stars. And I'm like, but that's part of the problem with Dancing with the Stars. They need more edge. They need new judges. They need hosts with great personalities. That's all. Anyway. <laughs> Tori Spelling has Ebola. <laughs> nice. I say that and they're all laughing. Look, look at them laugh. Why, do, why are you laughing? Because you don't believe it? Because you think that Tori Spelling would do anything to catch our attention? Yes. Especially on the day of the eve of her reality show premiering tonight? Yes. Then the, that, this is why you're my people. This is why. Really? Okay. Well, here's the situation. Tori's not feeling well. She goes to the doctors. The doctors quarantined her for Ebola-like symptoms. It turns out she had a respiratory infection. But she has her friends all worried that she's making herself sick through stress. You know what, Tori? Honestly, you need to get those cameras out of your house. You are a spelling, damn it. You need to make up with your mother, divorce that man, and take care of your kids. Yeah. The poor children never look happy, you know? And I'm gonna tell you, the oldest one is seven. Look at this little goo, 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 goo right there. Goo, goo, goo. Um, Dean looks like he's forcing himself to smile. <laughs> Dean has more luggage under his eyes than the Louis Vuitton store. <laughs> Tori is forcing a smile as well. Do you see that these are forced smiles? Yes. Do you see that the kids are telling the true story about what's going on? The kids aren't happy. You, she has a history of health issues, and you, we all know that without our health, we're no good to nobody. Uh, she doesn't sleep at night. She doesn't eat. She cries all the time. And it's a vicious cycle that's going on. Don't you remember last spring we saw her sitting outside the ambulance? Um, you know, she, she went in then. She, she gets migraines. 
She's got a mother who I'm sure loves her, but for whatever reason, I know, know the two sides to every story. Mrs. Spelling is not an old woman. Mrs. Mrs. Spelling is young enough and vibrant enough to still get in there and help out with her grandchildren, help her daughter recover from the divorce that she so badly needs. And you need a shrink to talk to you why you need to get off reality TV, Tori. And this reality TV and this marriage crap has been really hard on Dean. He might not say it, but you can just look at him and tell. Look what Tori and Dean look like back in the day. These people have been married for six years. In six years, both of them have spiraled out of control. Look at Dean. And that's a good, this is a good bad picture of Dean. That, that's a good bad picture. Look what he used to look like. It's almost like he had a head transplant. He's a, he's a whole, totally different person. And he's eating himself silly. He's not an old man. Dean. Oh, Tori. Oh, Dean. What a, and you know that, that Ebola thing? On account of that alone, I guess I'll only be talking to you f through the TV from now on. <laughs> now, does the Ebola have you living your life a different way? Yeah. I know it does me. Today is like day number seven of not touching people and shaking hands. <laughs> you know, so when I walk over during commercial, don't reach out, because I'll be like, <laughs> you see? I scrub my hands so much that I barely have skin left on them. Anyway, look, just in time for Tori's Ebola, Season two of True Tory premieres tonight at nine on Lifetime. <laughs> I don't understand people's obsession with reality TV. I mean, you know, you do it once and that's fine. But the second your marriage starts to get in trouble or your life starts spinning out of control, isn't that time to tell the cameras to get out? Yes. Yeah. Well, th somebody tell Tori that, and somebody tell that to Bethany Frankel. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't, like, I don't get it. When we met her through the TV when she was on The Housewives, remember, she was broke, and, you know, she, she just funny and bawdy and, I think, likable, and then all of a sudden, you know, she meets Jason, and they're cute, and then they have the baby, and that's all good, and then they get the divorce, and then... Bethany's coming back to the Real Housewives of New York. It's official. And I don't know whether you all heard this or not, but I think this, this is the worst decision ever. It's like lower than what she's built. I mean, no, the talk show failed. Well, everybody can't do a talk show. Everybody can build a successful liquor line. Do you understand what I'm saying? But she's done this, and now you're going back to the house damn wives? That's like Bruce Jenner, and you know what? He was once great, now he's Brucetta. I, like, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I just think it's a bad decision. I think that, that, that you know... If for anything, like once you divorce, why would you want Jason to know the color of the carpet in your living room? Like Jason is the ex-husband and you know, he started out really nice too, but there's gotta be a lot of mean in Jason who was really putting the screws to her. But she started by putting the screws to him. And now it's just very screwy. And, I, and I'm sure Jason's not gonna allow their daughter to be on the reality show, but that's fine because kids don't necessarily make reality shows. Although that major that Tiny and T.I. have, <laughs> every time that boy walks in the room makes me want to get pregnant. <laughs> Just to have another one. He's so cute. But, you know, for the housewives, the kids don't make the show. So, all right, so Bryn probably won't be on. You know, Jason won't sign off on that. But why would you want Jason to know, like, like how you're doing in business or who you're dating or if you're dating or that the tile on your kitchen floor is black and white? Like, like an ex-husband is like, ugh. <laughs> Why? All right, look, clap if you think it's a brilliant idea for her to go back to the fledgling ratings New York Housewives. Clap. Two girls in the back, and I know why. Because you want to see the rest of her life spiral out of control? Use a hater. Anyway, just calling it like I see it, the Real Housewives of New York returns to Bravo sometime next year.
Hi, Brendan. I'll need three antacids during the commercial. The heartburn is creeping up. <laughs> it was the hot sauce on my eggs this morning. Anyway, you won't believe uh, that thing about Monica Lewinsky. Have you heard this already? Yes. That she was in love with him. Yes. Well, duh. <laughs> when you're 22 and you're, you know, making whoopee with the president. And then she confessed her love to him. She confessed her love about him. Maybe she never told him. Anyway, she was giving a speech, you all. Um, she was giving a speech for Forbes. Was it for Forbes? And um, she was saying that, um, you know, yes, she was in love with him. I don't think at 22 she was in love with him. I think that that was lusty infatuation because you're on your knees for the president under his desk. <laughs> what happened, right? Yes. And, and I don't think that he said, I love you, to get her to do that. You know, when you're the president, you don't have to... There's certain guys, they don't have to tell you that you love them before your clothes just drop off. And I guess for her, that was the president. And... And... Furthermore... I don't feel sorry for Monica Lewinsky because I think at 22 years old, a young lady knows what she's doing. I know at 22, I knew what I was doing. I was, I was smart at 22. I had to be. I didn't come from, you know, much, and I had to build my... Not you, Mommy and Daddy, but I'm talking about... <laughs> Daddy, it's not like you or Mommy were able to give me a job, you know, uh, doing what I wanted to do. So, you know, you, when, you, when you come from working class, you really have to get smart quick because there's nobody to catch you when you fall. And so I don't feel sorry for this Lewinsky because at 22, she knew what she was doing. And unfortunately, she gained nothing from this. You know, she probably thought she would continue to be the president's companion for years and years and years, right? And then maybe eventually, you know, because nobody would find out about it, but her job in the White House would elevate, and then she would marry a congressman, and then they would live, you know, on the hill and have three children in a station wagon. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Do they still make station wagons? Yes. They do? Oh. We had the wooden one, an LTD country squire. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so I don't feel sorry for her. Uh, to my knowledge, she hasn't had a boyfriend since all this went down. But how do you bring that home? Mom, Dad, this is Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> you know, excuse me, Kevin, can I talk to you in the other room? <laughs> anyway, uh, so I guess she makes money speaking and being shamed, kind of, sort of but not really. She joined Twitter yesterday, though. I sent her a welcome tweet. <laughs> Short and simple. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monica. So, things keep getting worse for the less than smart Teresa Giudici over in Jersey. Oh. No, this, this is like the worst. I mean, I guess you can't get any worse than going to jail, but... Okay, so Teresa's crisis manager, Wendy Feldman, has quit. Oh. Now, the first thing I thought was, well, Teresa doesn't have money to pay the bill, so of course you're gonna quit. Well, that's not why she quit. She quit because Teresa wrote a letter to the judge <laughs> requesting which prison she wants to go to. Oh. Connecticut from Orange is the New Black. I am not lying. So Wendy quit on account of there's protocol, there's levels to this. You don't just write a judge and make requests. You know, first of all, you talk to your crisis manager, and your crisis manager does things. You know what I mean? There's, there's levels. I mean, less than smart. <laughs> Wendy says, as I've tried to instruct Teresa, this is a process that must be respected. A designation to a camp is a gift, not a requirement. By making this request, Teresa has jeopardized months of work, months of preparation, and in fact may jeopardize where she ultimately, ultimately is ultimately designated or sent. So now they're going to send her to the worst hood prison ever. <laughs> One of those prisons that look like Locked Up Abroad. Do you like Locked Up Abroad? Do you like that? that? See, that's my kind of TV also. Like, I like that stuff. I don't know why, 
By the way, did you know that this Wendy here, the crisis manager, did 26 or 16 months in federal prison for fraud? <laughs> I know! That's what I'm here for, to fill you in. Yeah. Look. So, that means that Wendy does know the ins and the outs of the system, you know. Uh, apparently, she built, like, a bunch of her wealthy um, constituents out of, like, $4 million. Um, what was she in? What kind of fraud? Wire, t wire fraud, wire fraud. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny, when you're in the grocery store, you just never know who's standing in line behind you who's done time. Because I wouldn't have pegged her for being a jailbird because she's helping Teresa. I would have just thought, you know, she graduated from Brown and, you know, she studied whatever she does, crisis management. And anyway, this is a bad move, Teresa. Teresa, poor thing. You know what? I don't think Teresa even realizes that she's got a tick. She, she's got... We've seen it through the TV so many times, and she goes into prison in, on January 5th, and goodness only knows where she's going to end up doing her time, but by writing that letter to, letter to the judge, he'll probably really put the screws to her, you know? She'll be in there with murderers and stuff. Which is not fair. I think that they need to have prisons for every crime, you know? Like, like wire fraud and white-collar crime over here. Stabbers and shooters in, in this prison, Right? Child molesters yeah. in this prison. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I wanted to remind you that I am performing at the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that there is very mild airbrushing on this. Uh, you know, <laughs> Facebook tried to call me out and I was just like, no, you've never been to the show. I'm thin. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to be telling jokes at the Venetian two nights, October 31st and November 1st. Go to wendyshow.com. I'll see you in Vegas. Get your tickets and keep clapping. We've got more great shows here, everybody. A deserving breast cancer survivor is going to get a fabulous head to toe makeover. But up next, the one and only, my girl, Paula Abdul, is here. the juiciest hot topics to cure your midweek blues. And new co-host of The View, Nicole Wallace. Plus, looks scary, but in a good way. Get this year's hottest Halloween costumes for you and your whole family. <laughs> Tomorrow on an all-new Wendy. is a legendary singer, dancer, and a true pop culture icon. And now she's doing some terrific work on behalf of the Avon Breast Cancer Foundation for Women. Give it up for our friend, Paula Abdul. you were here, you were a dark. I was saying I love your hair color. Thank you. I love your hair color. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. If, if you put your petite feet right there on those feet, oh we're going to give you some DSW shoe cam. <laughs> those are good. Those are good, Paula. Thank you so much. How do you keep it together? I mean, you, you know, you always look fantastic. You're a, a shorter woman, so you can't gain weight. No, I mean, you yeah. know what I'm saying. I, I do. I'm a tall woman. If I gain 10 pounds, it's not that effective. You know, you're a short woman. If you gain 10 pounds, that's a new wardrobe. It's because a new, it is a yeah. new wardrobe. Five pounds on me is a, a lot. A lot, yes. Do you work out? I do. I work out, but I, I love dancing, so... I, for me, I'm very grateful and blessed to have always incorporated that into my program. That's what we know you for probably the most, uh, even over the singing, the dancing, always terrific. I'm surprised yeah. you've never owned a dance studio. It's interesting. You know, when I first started as a choreographer, one of the biggest gifts that, were, that was given to me is to take over the whole Fred, Ast Fred Astaire dance studios. Really? But I, I wasn't ready to do that then. Aw. I know. But, uh, you Regrets? know... Regrets? 
No regrets. Yeah. It was timing was everything then. So yeah. But I, I I'm out there teaching and I and I do master classes and it's all good. Okay. 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 So you were great on American Idol, as Thank everyone you. tells you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And American Idol. Uh, you know, I guess all good things must change before they come to an end. It's not the same show that it was when you and Randy and Simon were there. Um, does that make you say, yes? <laughs> or, do, or does that make you say, oh? Well, you know, I, it was an incredible blessing that we got mm -hmm. to be part of something as, as a unit, something original that, that made history. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, everything evolves. And... Um, I still think it's really important to have these kind of shiny floor shows where you're able to go out there and really uh, cultivate talent. Well, when you guys started with Idol, you also were the only ones there. I mean, now there's so many, you know, talent competition shows. Absolutely. And I think that that's what happens yeah. for a good nine, ten years. We were, we were right there at the, at the helm. They used to call us the Death Star. Yeah. But, do, you, do you miss it? <laughs> um, I don't miss doing that. I miss the people. Yes. So I, um, I really pester them and I hang out. Yeah. I am at their doorstep. <laughs> yeah. I just stand by Randy and say, pitchy. <laughs> pitchy. <laughs> um, now Pharrell is over at The Voice and I didn't realize that you gave Pharrell his first shot at TV. Pharrell. Well, I am a big Pharrell fan and, and years ago when I did the first season of X Factor with uh -huh. Simon, I fought for Pharrell. I wanted him to be my co-mentor when we were at the judge's house. Yeah. And I fought for him, and because I know how brilliant he is, and the kids were so excited to see him. He's and, very talented. And everyone got to see how wonderful he is on television. Mm. Yeah. And he's doing a great job. By the way, you know, at The Voice, he's already been asked back for a second season. Uh, as that, he that's should how, be. That's how good he's doing. As he, I mean, he is so brilliant. Yeah. And he's, he's really relevant. I know all the contestants want to be uh, aligned with him oh, because him. everything he does turns to gold. So, you know, you are an icon yourself. And, um, you know, Ariana Grande, who seems to have a terrific career. This kid is 21 years old. But she's making a name for herself as being difficult and diva-esque. Is there any advice that you would give if, when we don't know that this is a fact or exactly, not? Exactly, I was just going to say. However, look, some, here, look how adorable. There's some very credible people, in, including Juliana Rancic over at E, who have talked out about run ins with her. What advice would you give her? Well, I mean, didn't she just, she, I mean, she must have started becoming relevant when she was 18, turning 19. I mean, she's 21 years old. You got to cut some slack there. Um, yeah. She's coming into her own as a young lady. And um, again, I don't know what is true or what is not, but uh, the people who are very, you know, in her quote unquote camp, I think, yeah. are the ones who can speak best about her. Yeah. You know, she, um, I was just telling her, hold your head up, the American Music Award Association, um, the nominations came out the other day, and she didn't get one, even though she's extremely popular and you can't turn on the radio without not hearing her, you know, were you ever robbed of awards when you know you should have been at oh, least all not... the time, every single year. Uh, no, I mean, you know, like I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure she's looking like, well, why wasn't I nominated? No, I'm, I'm teasing there, but listen, I mean, look at some of the greatest, greatest artists that have been out there that sell millions and millions uh -huh. of albums that don't get a nomination ever, so or That's that what aren't I inducted into the Hall of Fame. Right. So it's. I mean, the awards that are coming to her anyway are, are gifts above and beyond, I'm sure, her wildest dreams. So exactly. I, I think that she has a long career ahead of her, and, and she'll find her way and uh -huh. what's comfortable for her. So, Simon, Simon, as you know, had a baby with his best friend's wife. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, it's Simon. <laughs> that's Simon. It's Simon. Um, and recently, he let it be known that he's a hands-off dad. What I appreciate about Simon is even if you don't agree with him, he's very, very honest. Now, he says that he can't wait for his son to grow up so that he can introduce him to girls and take him out night Um That's a very Simon thing? Yeah, um, that, that's, that's, that can only come from a father named Simon Cowell. Oh. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but the craziest thing when he is, I hear, that this is insane, that his baby is the best and well-behaved baby. How did that happen? 
happen? <laughs> because his baby is eventually going to have to raise his father. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, how's your sister, Wendy? She's fantastic. Yeah, Wendy is a breast cancer survivor. Yes, she is, and she's my pride and joy, even though she's my older sister. Yes. How long has she been a survivor? How she was years? first diagnosed in 2001. In 2001. Yes. Well, I know that you've partnered with the, um, with the Avon Breast Cancer Foundation. Very, very proud to be uh, uh, commingling. And, you know, I'm, I'm a, a proud ambassador, a brand ambassador for Avon. And when the Avon, Avon Breast Cancer Foundation first reached me, I was like, absolutely, yeah. I, I want to do this. Because it was first, will you choreograph it? And they didn't know that I had a story that, you know, I, I hold very dear to me, which Wendy. is with my sister, Wendy. Yeah, and so you did the video. Tell us about it. And Wendy's in the video. Well, I, I said, Wendy, you, my, to my sister, uh, are you free on this date? Uh, I think so. Yeah, good, because you're going to be in a video. And she said, what? <laughs> and, no, I just, she, you know, I tell her all the time she's my favorite part of the entire uh, video. But it's such a, a fun, yet very important message. And the know? message is... Um, girls to check ourselves che check ourselves even over mammograms when you're in the shower check yourself check, get to well, know your body. early detection know your body have have conversations with your doctor about breast health uh -huh. and make sure you understand the risks that the risk factors that are involved with just environmentally and and with medication and things and looking at you in that video you still got it paula abdul well, thank yes, you so you much. thank you uh, when we come back everybody paula is going to be brave enough to sit in the wendy hot seat so we'll learn more about her Wendy hot seat. We've got four questions. We're going to start off from warm, and with each question, we're going to turn up the heat. Paula, ready? I, yes, <laughs> I guess so. Here is your 40 degree question. Paula, what is your biggest dating turnoff? When they don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to a Paula Abdul? Wow. All right, your 60 degree question. Um, Simon is known. For his jet, would you like to elaborate on that answer? <laughs> when they don't just... actually, also, I'm, I'm teasing. They'll show up. Yeah, breath. Breath is a bad, bad breath. breath. Yeah, it's not uh -huh. good. a universal turnoff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sixty degree question, Paula. Simon is known for his generosity. What's the most extravagant gift he's ever given you? What Simon are you talking about? Really? I don't know that Simon. I, he's given me nothing. He's given he's given ex girlfriends houses. Well. I'm not an ex-girlfriend, oh. okay? I was he's trying giving, to trick you. I, I, he's giving, <laughs> he gives me gas and bloat and ajina and things like that, but nothing extravagant. That's good. I miss you guys' relationship together <laughs> on Idol. I do. All right, Paula, here's your 80-degree question. Um, have you ever used your celebrity to get out of a jam? If so, what circumstance? You know, I've never been able to apply it to myself, but I'm really good at helping um, my friends out, like my stylist, I've gotten her out of like moving violations. Like she just will roll through a stoplight and it's like, ah! And, and she gets pulled over and I, I'll get out of the car because I'm so nervous for her because she's freaking out. Uh -huh. And I'll, 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 I'll dance at a quinceanera, a wedding, a bachelor party, <laughs> a bat mitzvah, a bar mitzvah. It works. Yeah. It'll work. <laughs> That's good. So you don't pull the jerky. Don't you know who I am? Oh, gosh, Perfect, no. Abdul. No, no. <laughs> All right, here's your final question. This is your 100-degree question. Paula. Yes. Have, have you ever had sex while your own music is playing? <laughs> now, be honest. No, that's for foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Abdul, you're a good sport. Thank you so much for being here. And you be sure that you check out Paula's Check Yourself video, uh, music video. For more information on the Avon Breast Cancer Foundation Check Yourself campaign, go to wendyshow.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> with over-the-top hot topics. Are you serious? And 
She's the ultimate drama queen. Susan Lucci shares dessert fit for a diva. So give me seconds. Thursday on an all-new Wendy. Except for you, Red. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Paula, and I'm currently six months pregnant. I work as a hair colorist. And recently, a, a client came in and knocked on my belly with her knuckles. What? Yes, yes, Wendy. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm fuming. I'm so mad. Does she tip well? <laughs> Decent. Has she been with you for years? Yes. All right, what's your question? Um... I'm so mad, but she's a paying client and the holidays are coming, so yeah. how do I confront her about the situation? You can't. I can't. Okay. But you have to have a, a nice forearm game like this. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh, when I was pregnant, I was offended by anybody. Exactly. Exactly. When I see the hand coming, I don't want you to touch. Exactly. Don't touch. Exactly. And you shouldn't do that to, to pregnant women. You should ask first. If you really want to touch, the polite thing to do, I think, is to ask, can I touch? Exactly. Oh, Paula, you can't say anything. I don't think she can say anything. Do you think she should say something? Yeah. A couple of people would. But what if all of a sudden she gets her feelings hurt and then she, Paula's going to lose a client? Yeah. Diapers are expensive. Exactly. Diapers are expensive. <laughs> don't, don't say it. It'll all be over in okay. two months, okay? okay. All right. Thank you, Hey. Hey, Wendy. I'm Brooke. How you doing? How you doing, Brooke? Where are you from? I'm from Canada. Okay. How can I help? So, I've been living with my guy friend for the past three months, and recently he told me he was going to be moving out, so we hooked up. <laughs> I know, I know. And circumstances have changed, and now he has to stay. I don't want a relationship, though, so how do I approach it? Guys do this to us all the time. I know. Uh, I'm leaving. No, I'm staying. No. All right, so does he think that you want a relationship now? Well, we've kind of talked about that part already, and he knows that, but I still think... He wants the other stuff. Do you think that he can stay uh, with you um, and still continue to pay rent? Because I know, you know, you were about to be left in the lurch needing a roommate. Yeah, and I, that's what I'm worried about is, like, if that's the intent, is he, well, is he staying for that intent? Or would he be okay with how well, would I talk to him about that? Brooke, relationships are able to survive with one greasy hookup. You know, just a one-time thing. <laughs> there are certain people who possess the maturity to still be able to be friends with a guy after hooking up, okay? Yes. This cannot happen anymore. Because nope. otherwise the lines get blurred. Exactly. All right. Thank so no you. No blurring lines. No blurring lines. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. Up next, everybody, we're going to give a fabulous makeover to a deserving breast cancer survivor. So don't go away. <laughs> Make your feed a little more fabulous. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for hot topic updates, candid pictures, and of course, behind the scenes did. Get in on the conversation today. <laughs> for all that, my hair better look good, Antoine. <laughs> all month long, everybody, we've been giving head to toe makeovers to deserving breast cancer survivors. Today, we're making over a woman by the name of Fatima. And even though she's currently going through chemo, she has an incredible amount of energy. Take a look. Hello, Wendy. My name is Fatima. I'm 51 years old. I was diagnosed with breast cancer six months ago. I'm still undergoing chemotherapy treatments. I come from a family of survivors. I'm a mother of five children, wonderful kids. And I would love to have a makeover. Um, and to enjoy a night out with the girls. And just to show them that breast cancer doesn't stop you from being sexy, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Fatima. Here to reveal Fatima's fat, fantastic new look is the founder of Glam for Good Style and expert. Say hello to our friend, Mary Alice Stevenson. Hi. So nice to see you again. Great to see you. So Fatima's daughter's also here in the audience, Marilyn. Hi. Hiya, Marilyn. Are you ready to see your mom? Yes. yes. Fatima, bounce on out here. <laughs> All that energy. Fantastic.
fantastic job head to toe. Oh. Let's, let's talk about this you know, outfit. Uh, Fatima wanted to look young and hip and cool. She's the mom of five kids. And, right, and she's also a grandma, so we made her a glamour. A glamour, and, and she did, you're 51, right, Fatima? How old are you? 51 look, look at you, you look, look like a teenager. You. You know, one of, the, one of the reasons that I picked this look and the brand, which is Ann Taylor, is they just recently gave over $4 million to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Aww. First and foremost, leather is like the hottest trend in fashion right now, and it's really a fun way to kind of edge up any outfit you have and, and give that kind of youthful look to yeah. anything. Then we pulled that statement necklace from Ann Taylor that is bright and bold and fun, and of course, red, good, that yeah. deep, deep moon. And this red. is embellished with um, leather strips? This is embellished with leather strips. So leather is just all over the place, as yeah. you've probably seen. Yes. It's such a big, big <laughs> trend. And this is so out of Fatima's comfort zone, but we, when we were trying it on, she started dancing in the it dressing is, room. It, it, and so it's, it's, a, it's a nice length. You've got great legs. Work right. them. So she, that's a great, that's exactly, well, I'm so glad you said that, Wendy, because Fatima didn't want to show her legs. She has awesome legs. But in the winter, you can wear stockings and these opaques and go shorter with the hat. Absolutely. Right? And you can also go shorter after 50. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Then let's talk about the, the bracelets, which you can't really see. Show us those bracelets. What's so great about these uh, bracelets from Ann Taylor is that 50% of proceeds go to Breast Cancer Research Fund, Fantastic. which I love. What about the booties? Oh, booties, uh, so super cute. Um, Ann Taylor, awesome boots. Love the whole look. She feels fun and fresh, and she wanted to be able to just go out for a fun night with the girls. So you're going to keep the outfit on and walk right out of the studio and go out tonight yes, with them? That's fantastic. <laughs> um, your wig, her wig, everybody, is from my line, Wendy Williams Hair World. My wigologist helped her style it. Right. This one, this one is called the Tasha. The Tasha is synthetic. And it's beautiful, and have a good time with oh, your friends. You know what, Wendy, too? I wanted to say a thanks to Jai, because he did a great, great job at her makeup. Our guest makeup artist, yes. <laughs> Terrific. Fatima, how do you feel? Wendy, breast cancer just messed with the wrong girl. Okay. <laughs> My wigs are available at especiallyyours.com. All month long, we've been making donations of wigs to the American Cancer Society. Fatima, congratulations. Mary Alice, oh, thank terrific thank job. You, thank you. Up next, everybody, celebrity said what? <laughs> <laughs>